Welcome to Season 2, Episode 9 of Plane Savers! Hello everybody. Man, last episode was absolutely amazing. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, we got to fly DTD, our D-Day DC-3 with Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. Super, super happy. I'm super happy also because that was the last um, mission we had for DTD for 2019. It's going to be going into the hangar in Red Deer. Uh, I got some footage of us putting the airplane away and uh, a retrospective from the crew, including my father, on what it was like to fly with a rock star. Uh, very, very cool. But right now, before that, I just want to give you guys a quick update on the Fokker DR1, the triplane that we, we are rebuilding. Uh, I got a little surprise for you, so let's head inside and check this out. Hello, guys. So look, everybody. Benjamin's here and uh, he's been working hard. You see, we got we started getting the new area out. So if you're new to the to this channel, uh, we are restoring a Fokker DR1. And Benjamin's here, Benjamin from season one and of course some episodes of season two. Uh, you've seen he used the CNC machine to build uh, the ribs. Those parts, yes. The ribs and all of this. So look at that. Subway. <laughs> So it's been pretty good. So yeah, so this is it folks. We are um, Not ahead of the tiger team, uh, but we are mm. We're getting going. So what, what's what have you been working on today? So I've been labeling uh, some uh, some parts like uh, Those for the rear uh, webs at the run and I've been uh, a brewing I think the word I've been brewing the wood since uh, They still all got uh, those little uh, little Chips of wood, I don't know how you say, but all of that to remove it takes a long time because it's not good. Once, once you come uh, to gluing, if those guys are still there, no, no good. So, what's the next step? So, that here is for uh, the aluminum jigs for the, for the gluing of the ribs. So, we've got already uh, some pieces of the bending jigs. Like uh, those are all for uh, bending the cap strips for the, the ribs. And those here are the ones we're gonna use as removable, removable blocks for uh, the rib making. And the rest of the parts are at e &E being made at the moment right now. I've been in contact with Pascal, she's making that and she's gonna send us uh, the whole package, hopefully. Okay, folks, I know this seems a little bit complicated. A lot of crazy stuff going on here. Like, what are these things? We'll know, we'll learn a little bit later. Uh, Benjamin's working very, very hard. In fact, I have to give Benjamin a ride home because he blew the exhaust on the truck on the way here. But, uh, and William, William's in Red Deer. If you remember William, there, uh, he's just fin finishing up some flight training. As you know, with the pilot shortage, we're gonna definitely need William. And we got Benjamin. Benjamin's working all day today on the King Air. So yes. this is so this is uh, this is the bonus stuff at the end. <laughs> so uh, actually, because did you got you got like a knife here? Yeah, you got that knife. Yeah. Okay. So here, this is like a ritual that's a little bit late. Uh, because DTD is done, I'm gonna finally cut off my my badges here. Both. You can cut Both. them right off. Either. Careful. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There we go. <laughs> so that was my um, that was my uh, <laughs> Oshkosh badges. I still got the Oshkosh thing on, and the behind the uh, backstage thing for um, Iron Maiden. So there you go, folks. Uh, that's a wrap on DTD, but not quite yet. Let's flash forward to Red Deer while we're putting it away. I made this little uh, video for you guys. Check this out. So Dad. Yes. What have we done with this airplane this year? Well, after they got uh, those fine people put together in Quebec, we went through Upper Canada, Lower Canada, went through the, the uh, Plains of Abraham, then we uh, brought into Central Canada and down into, through the Central States, all down through the Bible Belt, then back across into the uh, to Red Deer, and just in the last little while, we went in Stampede City with it. We flew it up to the city of champions and now we're back in red deer and it'll rest out the winter here so it's done very very well for chris Koss in the country and you can see it came through unscathed with no oil leaks no problems no snags so uh i hope mike you can thank all those people that were working with you to 
make it as good as it is today. What's your thoughts? Uh, how, how many hours you got on the airplane now? And uh... Well, we've flown the airplane more than 20 hours since we uh, did our initial test flight in, in uh, Montreal there in June. So it, the airplane's done very, very well. What's it like seeing uh, Bruce again? Oh, like seeing Bruce again? Oh, that's that's very good. That just uh, saves me a trip to England. I don't have to go see Mrs. Windsor now. Are you, are you going to go buy an Iron Maiden album? I hope he gives me one. Gives. No, I had him fly in the airplane. He does, he does very well. He really likes the airplane. He really fits well into it. So, Sam, what were you thinking when I, when I first asked you if you wanted to come on this trip? Oh, I thought it was pretty awesome. I wasn't really expecting something like that. So, uh, what's your thoughts on uh, on Bruce? Oh, he's, in a, he's a cool guy. Yeah, he flies lots of cool airplanes. He was uh, telling me about his stuff, the stuff he flies in, in England there. What's what's your thoughts of seeing seeing him on stage and then seeing him in the cockpit? Oh, it's completely different. He's uh, on stage, he's jumping up everywhere, like a, a madman, and then in the cockpit, he's a, he's a, a clear-thinking pilot doing his thing, flying an airplane. It seems like uh, the, the musician part of him is a completely different part of his life. Oh, he's a lot more he's a lot more chill than I thought like uh, and a bit like Joe just kind of kind of out there <laughs> explain to us where we were and where uh, the type of flying we did and where did we end up we left Devon right after uh, a big uh, thunderstorm went through yesterday so the weather was pretty low and uh, so we left Devon and then we uh, flew to Calgary and he would was uh, practicing scud running with the airplane because we were VFR. And then uh, as we got closer to Calgary, the weather cleared up a little bit for us. Did you? Did anybody uh, recognize the airplane uh, when you landed in Calgary? Oh yeah, a lot of people recognized the airplane, but uh, I gotta tell you, when we were flying down through central Alberta in that, uh, in that cloud and that rain, I said, well, you know, you're probably very comfortable because you probably think this is England, you know, with the, with the moisture. and just pretend we're over the English Channel and everything will be fine. But no, when we landed, uh, when I landed in Calgary, of course, a very busy lineup of jets at the end of the runway. As we touched down, I heard one jet ask the other jet, is that the plane saver airplane that just went by? And the guy said, yeah, that's the plane saver just taxied by my window here. Awesome. What's next? What's next? Well, what's next is whatever forms in our imagination, or your imagination, I guess. So I, I have no idea what's next. Uh, there's, there's so many things to do, you couldn't, couldn't throw a dart and pick the best ones. You're all good. So, Ronnie, we, it was only seven months ago. I know, eh? But, uh, no, she's done good, so time to put her away. So I'll be putting her in the hangar here this afternoon, and I'll take it back out in the spring. But, yeah, she gets to stay inside all winter, so. But what kind of stuff are you going to be doing to her? Uh, I'm going to fix up the interior of the cockpit and uh, reupholster the cockpit, and we're going to change out. Add some ra 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 radios to it. Well, that's my toolbox. That's leftover decals from uh, DTD there, and that's the uh, military FZ668. Okay, we're back into Area 51. We got WZS, we got PNR, and the Fokker. So, if you've seen the previous episodes, here is what's left of our Fokker DR1. We're gonna get this to Yellowknife uncrate it and uh, see what we have uh, I can't wait uh, let's just go quick and I'll show you guys where DTD is going to spend her winter okay here we are in the other side of the hangar as you can see we got uh, my father we got Uncle Ronnie over there and we got ROD the other D-Day DC3 and WZS so our, uh, Ronnie's going to bring ROD nose it in right here similar to what PNR is and then DTD is going to come right here. Uh, so you're going to have three D-Day airplanes in one hangar. That's probably the only place in the world that can say they got three D-Day airplanes in one hangar. Uh, but this is where the summer is going to, or the winter is going to be. And look at all these Norsemans. Look at this. Glenn Miller, Miller Norsemans. Look at that. Lots of, lots and lots of stuff to save. So, yeah. So they're uh, making a plan. Uh, Ronnie's going to hit the road with the Fokker pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, let's head back to DTD. What do you think of the weather, Stella? Well, it's getting colder, slowly colder. And um, I think DTD is as cold as I am, so it's time for it to go in the hangar. 
So you gotta remember folks, this is the exact same airplane that only seven months ago was completely abandoned, forgotten, and uh, now it looks like this. Now it's, she's beautiful, she's saved, and she's got a new home. Ryan's gonna be putting her in the new hangar there. Uh, it's looking good. What do you think, Stella? I love her, just look at her. <laughs> so as we head back to Yellowknife, going back to Fokker land, I'm gonna start working again on the Fokker. We're just gonna say one quick little goodbye to DTD. This is her ending. Uh, isn't she beautiful? Uh, just amazing, think of it. That uh, Going from the darling of Oshkosh to uh, flying around with rock stars and stuff, and it's all because of you at home that watched this, support this, shared, liked, subscribed, donated, brought merchandise, everything. You guys are the ones that brought this airplane back. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get that Fokker flying and uh, we'll be seeing you very soon. I'm so tired, bye.